Hi, welcome back to the channel. In today's lesson, we'll look at the concept of circular motion. I will explain the concept of uniform velocity, centripetal forces, and centrifugal forces. And with the aid of two examples, we will see how to solve questions relating to circular motion. That said, let's get started. Obviously, if I, if I have an object moving in a circular path like this, obviously, this object at any point on this circle has velocity. And we say this velocity is what is constant. The velocity V of this object is the uniform, is constant, is moving at a uniform velocity. And this circle obviously has a center and has a radius. It forms a circle. The circle has a radius. Let's call the radius R. Now, for this object to have moved from here to this point, it must have covered, it must have moved through an angle. And we call that this angle here, we call it the angular displacement theta. Now, and it must have covered a distance s. Now, we say that this distance s that this object has covered is the same thing as r theta. This is the same thing as the radius times the angular displacement. Now, if you remember from our lesson on motion, we said that velocity is equal to distance over time. That is, my velocity will be equal to s over t. So that obviously, my velocity will be the same thing as r theta over t. I've just substituted r theta in the place of s. Now, since we are dealing with circular motion, one of our points of interest will be angular velocity. Now, the angular velocity of this motion is represented as W, and if theta here is the angular displacement, obviously my angular velocity will be the same thing as the angular displacement over time t. So that velocity now, remember we said here we said velocity is equal to r theta over t and angular velocity is equal to theta over t so that your uniform velocity will be the same thing as r by the angular velocity r w so whichever one you are asked to look for whether i am calculating the uniform velocity or the angular velocity i can deduce it from v is equal to r w so that w itself is the same thing as v over r whichever of the two you are looking for. Now, since this object has velocity, it definitely has an acceleration. So the acceleration of this object in a circular motion is given as V squared over R. Now, for, for this motion, the velocity of this motion has three unique characteristics. Although the velocity here V is constant, but remember that the angular displacement is not constant. So the angular velocity of this object continues to change in the direction at which this object is moving. And the velocity, the magnitude of this velocity remains constant, but the angle is changing. Then if you observe, you see that the velocity, the Velocity of this object is tangential to the circular path at which the object is moving. Now, as this object is moving, two forces are in place and they keep this object in path. And the two forces that keep this object in path are one, the centrifugal force and the centripetal force. The centripetal force is directed towards the center of the circle, while the centrifugal force pushes the objects away from the center of the circle. That is, if my centripetal force is equal to m a, and our a is equal to v squared over r, that is, my centripetal force is the same thing as m v squared over r. While the centrifugal force, which is in the opposite direction, the centrifugal force, let's denote, I will denote this as FF, is the 
equals to minus m v squared over r. So with that, we have seen the concept of velocity, we've seen acceleration, we've seen centripetal and centrifugal forces acting on circular motion. Let's look at some examples to help us solve questions. Now, our first example says an object of mass 2 kg moves in a circle of radius 4 meters at uniform speed, at uniform speed of 16 meters per second. Calculate the angular velocity. My angular velocity obviously is the same thing as W and from V is equals to WR, we know that W is equals to V over R. Now it has a uniform speed. We've been given that V is equals to 16 meters per second. And we've been given R also to be equals to 4 meters. So that my angular velocity in this case is 16 over 4. Which is the same thing as 4 radians per second. Remember that W is the angular velocity and it is measured in radians per second. Now the centripetal force, we are asked to calculate the centripetal force. Remember the centripetal force is the force that is directed towards the center of the circle. So that my F now is equals to mv squared over, over R, which is equals to M. My M here is 6, my M here is 2, that's 2 kg, times my V is 16, that's 16 times 16, 16 squared. And my R obviously is 4. 4 here is 1. 4 in 16 is 4. So you can now multiply 4 by 16 by 2. If you do that with your calculator, you should come up with 128 newtons. Our force is measured in, in newtons. Now let's see the second question. My second question says that a, stone, a boy ties a stone to the end of a string which he then while he wheels above his head around a circular path of radius 15 centimeter. If the stone makes 20 oscillations in 10 seconds, calculate the angular velocity and the linear speed of the stone. Now in this question, we're interested in the angular velocity V and also in the, the angular velocity W and the linear speed v of the stone. Now the stone makes 20 complete oscillations. Now one oscillation of that stone is actually a circle. And a circle as here is a circle. A circle as the angle at the center of a circle is 360 degrees. Now 360 degrees we know is equals to 2 pi radian. Is equals to 2 pi radians. So that 20 oscillations, 20 oscillations now, this is one oscillation. This is one oscillation. Now 20 oscillations will be the same thing as 20 times 2 pi radian. Now, if 20 times 2 pi radian is equals to, that's 20 oscillations, that's the same thing as 40 pi radians. Now, if that's 40 pi radians, that's for 20 oscillations, and 20 oscillations was done in how many seconds? Was done in, in 10 seconds. Now my angular velocity, my angular velocity is equals to the angle at which it has moved, that's equals to theta, that's angular displacement over time t. Now the angular displacement, since it has moved around the whole circle 20 times, my angular displacement in this case is 40 pi radian over t it moved in 10 seconds so that here 10 here is 1 10 here is we are 4 now 4 pi radians so we are left with 4 pi radians as the angular velocity it does 4 pi radians per second now you can see the unit of angular velocity coming up again i i, I want to lay an emphasis on the unit of angular velocity which is radians per second now, if the angular velocity is 4 pi radians, now to calculate for our linear velocity, linear speed becomes easy, which is 
v now is equals to r w so that v is the same thing as four pi radians times r that's times 10. oh sorry my radius is times 15 that's times 15. my radius is, is 15. so that v now will be equals to 60 pi but here 60 pi will now be in centimeters per second why because we have 15 centimeters now to convert to si unit you can convert 15 centimeters to 0 0.15 meters so that you work with si unit but i'd rather leave it here as 15 as 15 centimeters so that i have v is equals to 60 pi centimeters per per second now with this i believe you understand how to work with circular motions and if you have questions please do not hesitate to use the comment section for your questions now thank you and have a nice day